Melbourne, capital of the state of Victoria, is situated on the Yarra River at the head of Port Phillip. Port Phillip is a more or less circular basin some 30 to 40 miles across, which provides Victoria's most suitable port for the accommodation of a large volume of shipping. The first moves leading to settlement in this region, then a part of New South Wales, were made in Tasmania. John Batman, a Tasmanian pastoralist, acting as agent for what came to be known as the Port Phillip Association, explored the locality and made a land deal with the natives. This deal was later quashed by the governor. Meantime, Batman also noted a site for a village and subsequently returned to Tasmania to prepare for settlement. It was, however, John Pascoe Faulkner of the Cornwall Hotel Launceston who independently promoted the expedition which actually established the first permanent settlement on the Yadda where it was joined by the Batman party. Faulkner's party consisted mainly of tradesmen, mechanics and labourers. Batmans of pastoralists and business and professional men. Together, they provided an excellent nucleus for an urban community. In 1836, William Lonsdale, police magistrate, was sent from Sydney to act as resident magistrate. In 1837, Governor Burke himself visited the settlement and authorised the laying out of a town. A government surveyor, Robert Russell, made the first plan of Melbourne. Robert Hoddle, Surveyor General, developed this plan and laid out the town with its main streets 99 feet wide, intersecting at 10 chain intervals, thus giving Melbourne the splendid thoroughfares for which it is noted. Today, this city area contains, within little more than half a square mile, the principal government and commercial offices, the law courts, a cultural centre embracing the public library, national art gallery, museum, etc. And of course, the chief shopping centre. The Melbourne Stock Exchange in Little Collins Street reflects the city's immense turnover in industrial investment. In King Street is the Wool Exchange. Victoria's largest selling centre for its most important export product. Parliament House, at the head of Burke Street, reminds us of the separation from New South Wales in 1851. This building was loaned to the Commonwealth Parliament from 1901 to 1927, pending preparation of the national capital. In recent years, some dramatic changes have appeared in Melbourne's skyline and its style of architecture. The Town Hall, General Post Office and other public buildings typify the city's more traditional architecture, much of which dates from its first 40 years of existence. The region immediately surrounding this central city block includes numerous areas of industrial activity, especially in South Melbourne, Port Melbourne and Fisherman's Bend. Also the city's shipping facilities comprising Station Pier, Prince's Pier and the Tasmanian Ferry Terminal on Hobson's Bay and the Victoria Dock area on the Yarra. The docking scheme included a canal which diverted the Yarra from its original course. Much reclaimed swampland at Fisherman's Bend now accommodates large automotive, aircraft and food processing industries. 
Australia's first railway was opened in 1854 between Melbourne and Port Melbourne, then called Sandridge. Port Melbourne's deep water piers accommodate large overseas passenger liners and the larger freight vessels visiting the Port of Melbourne. Other shipping is handled in the Victoria dock area where the bulk of the state's seaward exports are loaded. These include wool, fat lambs, fresh, dried and canned fruits, dairy products, skins, flour, etc. and a large range of manufactured goods, of which the bulk goes to markets in various Asian countries. Williamstown, west of the Yadda mouth, is Melbourne's oldest suburb. It was at the Williamstown shipyards that Australia's first steel merchant vessel was built in 1918. This inner suburban region also contains most of the attractive parks, gardens and other recreational areas for which Melbourne is noted. At Flemington is the famous race course where the annual Melbourne Cup race has become a national tradition. Royal Park contains the large and well laid out zoological garden. Near here is the Melbourne University, established in 1853, the Royal Melbourne Hospital, and the magnificent new Children's Hospital. The great international exhibitions of the 1880s were held in the Carlton Gardens. The opening ceremony of the first Commonwealth Parliament was also held in this huge exhibition building. And it was here that the state legislature sat while the Commonwealth Government occupied the State Parliament House. In Olympic Park, on the North Yadda Bank, is the gigantic stadium of the Melbourne Cricket Ground and several other arenas inherited from the 1956 Olympic Games, as well as the ultra-modern swimming pool. The Yarra River itself is a popular venue for aquatic activities. On the south side of the river are several of Melbourne's finest parklands and garden areas, including the King's Domain and the Botanical Garden. Melbourne's Great War Memorial is situated in the King's Domain. Nearby is the State Government House, which was originally built as a residence for the Governor-General. Albert Park, lying between South Melbourne and St Kilda, is one of the largest of these recreational reserves. It is distinguished by its pleasant driveway and its expensive boating lake which is used for a variety of water sports. Several multi-way, tree-lined thoroughfares between the city and the suburbs are among the widest city avenues in Australia. The most impressive of these is St Kilda Road. Commencing at Prince's Bridge, it links the city with the bayside suburb of St Kilda. St Kilda, besides being a large residential suburb and waterside resort, is Melbourne's chief out-of-town amusement centre. Its seafront often has a carnival atmosphere, where dance halls, fun parlours and roller coasters play a prominent part. Beyond this inner metropolitan region is the vast expanse of Greater Melbourne, with its closely packed suburbs stretching southward around the bay, eastward to the Dandenongs, and on the north and west merging into the broad acres of farming lands that lie to the south of the Great Dividing Range. This huge metropolitan area embraces between seven and eight hundred square miles. It contains considerably more than half Victoria's total population. Its component suburbs range from the many older established localities, such as Brunswick and Prahran, which lie close to the city, 
to the ultra-modern centres. Among the outer suburbs, where real estate development is constantly extending the city's limits. Manufacturing activities are widely scattered throughout this metropolitan region, stretching from Dandenong on the east, whose numerous factory products range from motor vehicles to processed foods, to Sunshine and Altona on the west, whose industries include a huge farm machinery plant and Australia's largest complex of petrochemical industries. Melbourne's total factory production, which also includes every aspect of light and heavy metal manufacture, textiles, plastics, groceries, canned meats and fruits, and a host of other products, comprises well over 25% of Australia's total industrial output. The Victorian Railways, with its extensive marshalling yards at North Melbourne, plays a big part in distributing these products as well as in bringing great quantities of rural products to the city. The food requirements of Melbourne's large population are drawn from every part of the state and conveyed to the city both by rail and road transport. Each day, some thousands of head of stock pass through the several independent abattoirs that provide the city's meat supplies. The population's fruit and vegetable needs involve the transport of hundreds of tons of farm produce to the Victoria markets each night to be sold in the early morning hours to numerous city and suburban shopkeepers. Many thousands of gallons of milk are brought to the city by bulk road tankers, mainly from the Gippsland dairy farms. The milk is pasteurised and bottled at several modern centres operated by separate distributing companies. In providing for its public transport needs, Melbourne was the first Australian city to have electric trains. Its suburban railway system, which is based on Flinders Street Station, was electrified in 1919. The terminal for country and interstate passenger trains is Spencer Street Station at the western end of the city. Melbourne is one of Australia's busiest centres for interstate air transport. The airport at Essendon reveals a continuous flow of arriving and departing passengers and numerous cargoes of airborne freight. The city's water supply comes mainly from a number of reservoirs on the Yarra River watershed, which covers an immense area on the southern slopes of the Great Dividing Range. The newest and largest of these is the Upper Yarra Reservoir, about 60 miles east of the city. Electric power for Melbourne's ever-growing industrial and domestic needs is drawn from the state grid system whose principal generating centre is in North Gippsland, on the great open-cut brown coal fields at Yalorn and Morwell. These things are the main components of Victoria's capital city, whose name was chosen by Governor Burke to honour Lord Melbourne, Prime Minister of England at the time of the city's founding. The city of Melbourne has played its part in the history and development of the Australian continent. Today, with its impressive cathedrals and its fine schools, colleges and universities, it is a far cry from the tiny settlement fostered by Batman and Faulkner on the bush-covered Yarra Bank in 1835. 